Hey, badass business owners. So you're finally making some money in your business and you want to know what should you do with your business profits? Uh, let's talk about this. Now, before we dive into this, there's one critical thing that I must assume, and that is you are taking a wage as an employee if you are currently working in the business doing the actual work. Because you must remember, you get paid two different ways as a business owner. One is as an employee, and that is for the work that you're doing as an employee in that business. And the second way you get paid is as the business owner off of the success of the business, which is where those profits come in. Just a quick recap of fair wage as an employee. If you are a service-based business and you provide the service, you're the one that actually goes out there and does the work. For example, if you have a landscaping business and you're actually doing the landscaping or a carpet cleaning business and you do the actual carpet cleaning, dog grooming, you actually do the grooming, plumber, you actually do the plumbing, stuff like that. Or if you are making the product, like you sell a product, but you personally are putting it together for you to be able to sell it. You are doing employee work. Therefore, it is important that in your business, you're accounting for employee wages for that time. And those go under your cost of goods. Now, if you just have another type of business where you're not actually creating something, providing something, but you are still doing employee work, those wages go under the operational costs in your business. Now, I'm not going to dive into that all right now, but basically it looks something like this for most people. They might say, hey, I'm going to pay myself 20 bucks a week for 40 hours. I'm going to pay myself ah, about 80 bucks a week for the work that I do as an employee, or I'm going to take a wage of $3,500, a flat wage every single month. It might look something like this, and you're going to put it on your profit and loss statement. Now, if you want to learn more about this, because that's not what this video is about, then check out this one here that I did on paying yourself correctly. I take a deeper dive into this, but today you want to know more about your profits. You've taken your sales and you've taken your, your cost of goods and your expenses, and all of a sudden you've got this great healthy profit line down here at the bottom. You've already made sure you were paid as employee and now it's about, wow, okay, my company's making this kind of money. What should I do with it? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about what you should do with your business profits. Well, the first thing you have to understand is there's three core things that your business profits go towards. One is retained earnings, one is taxes, and the third one is the money that you take as a business owner for the owner's draw. That's right. You don't get all of that money at the bottom of the profits because you have three other things that you need to make sure that you are taking care of. Let's take a closer look at each one. Retained earnings. This is money that you leave in the business. Okay. And the reason you're leaving this in the business is you're preparing for things in the future. For example, you might want to purchase some equipment or some inventory. Some You have to have cash in the business to be able to buy things. Whether you are buying a vehicle, you're buying a piece of equipment that you need, you need to invest in more inventory to stock your shelves. That's retained earnings. That's that's profits that are left in the business in order to buy more stuff. Sometimes you need to keep that money in there for slower months with lower profits. For example, if your expenses cost you $3,000 every single month and your month of December is absolutely horrible and you don't even make $3,000, then you need to borrow from other months in order to pay those months. That's one of the reasons why you have retained earnings so you have the money left into the business so you never have to reach into your own pocket to help the business float. And you might also want to invest in people in hiring early. Let's just say your business takes off every April. Well, you know that you're always behind in getting people trained and on board. Well, you might want to hire some people in March, but you don't have the sales yet. So you're going to use some of this retained earnings to hire early. Or maybe you want to do some additional training during the slower months. Well, you need to be able to have some money to be able to do that. And that's what retained earnings is for. It is for you to invest back into your business to help grow it. It could be marketing that you want to do. You have a marketing campaign you want to take off. I don't have this on the list, but that's another huge one that people want to do. Also, finally, it's a savings emergency fund for the business. You never know when crap's going to happen. When COVID hit, nobody knew so many businesses were going to have to shut down. Some businesses thrived, some businesses had to shut down. But if it wasn't for their emergency fund, a lot of them would not have made it through. Retained earnings, money left in the business to help the business grow. The second one is taxes. This is huge huge. These are your federal and state taxes. You must save money and put it aside to be able to pay your taxes. Um, and your tax basically off of the profits of the business. So you're not going to be paid off of the top sales line. It's usually going to count. It's going to go take away all of those expenses you had to run your business. And that's where your profits of the business get attacked. 
Now, it may not be that number specifically, but that's the number we're going to work on because there's some tax things that they can do behind the scenes that try to save you even more money. But because we're just being down and dirty and basic, we're just going to go off of the basic profits that you know you have in the business. And for many people, it's going to be between 20 and 40 percent when you add these two together. Your federal might be low and then your state or some of you don't have state. Some of you have only federal everybody's a little bit different. You need to see your tax specialist for your area and for your situation. I am not a tax specialist, but I'm here to make sure you don't get into trouble. Okay. Now, one thing I want to make sure that you do that's critical is that you put it into a separate account to avoid the temptation to spend it. When you see that money, you will think you have it and you will want to spend it. I encourage you go to a different bank than what you normally bank at. Open up an account and put the tax money over there. So out of sight, out of mind, it's there when you need to pay it. That's what I do. I went all my accounts are at one bank. I went to a bank that was inconvenient and I made sure I opened up an account and every time that I get paid, guess what? I slide some of that money that I know is going to go towards taxes right into there and that account just grows. And here's the cool thing. I always know I've got money for the taxes and more importantly, if there's any left over, I just leave it in there. Let it grow. Worst case, I have a savings account that is holding money and you never know when you're going to have one of those crazy years and you may not have taken out enough. Now, the third area is going to be your owner's draw. This is the one that you get the most excited about because this is where you take money out of the business as the business owner. You've put money in the business with retained earnings. You've paid Uncle Sam. You put that money aside. Now you're taking money out of the business. And one of the key things you need to do is you need to pull it out of the business and move it into your personal account. Remember, we want to have separate finances, one for the business, one for you personally. So when you are doing your owner's draw, please make sure that you move it completely out of this account and you put it into your personal account and that's where you are going to be spending it. So really you're taking money out of the business twice, once as the employee and once as the uh, owner's draw and moving that money over. You don't necessarily have to have a payroll to be able to do that, but you're just writing you know, keeping in mind that there's two different ways that you're paying yourself out of that money. Now, some people are wondering how much should I take out for each one? What should I put into each uh, one of those three areas? Well, there's a simple way that you can start doing this and you can always tweak it as you go. But I like to think of the third, 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 where basically you're putting a third into your taxes, a third into the retained earnings of the company, and you're going to put a third as your owner's draw. By starting off this way, it's going to give you a really good understanding of where you're at in the beginning and you can always adjust as needed because things are going to come up. For example, let's just say you need to buy a van and you go into your retained earnings and you don't quite have enough money. So guess what? It's got to come from somewhere, right? So typically what you're going to do is in that case, you're going to put more into your retained earnings and lower your owner's draw. Uh, maybe you know you're going to need it in the next month or two. So you're going to take a little bit less for yourself grow that retained earnings so this way you're ready to buy the van. Now, word of caution, you notice I said take it from the owner's draw. Never, ever, ever mess with Uncle Sam's money. It is the number one thing that gets owners in trouble because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to pay those taxes. Now, some can argue that it's going to be when you buy that thing, it's going to give you a uh, reduction in your taxes and therefore you won't need your taxes. Listen, keep yourself out of trouble. Like I said, you'd rather err on the side of caution. So it's better for you just to slide some owner's draw of money over to there uh, and plan it that way. So just be careful. I, I don't want to see you go out of business because you failed to pay Uncle Sam. Almost every small business owner has horror stories of when they, in the beginning, because they did not save their money for the government and you need to make sure that you are doing that. Okay. Once again, your business profits, retained earnings, taxes, owners draw. Hopefully this gives you a really good idea. Now, one of the things I preach here all the time is you need to know your business numbers because when you know your business numbers, you could increase those profits. And if you want to learn more on those, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because that's what we talk about here is your business Number speaking of which, if you want to learn more about your profit and loss statement, here's a good video for you to start with if you are completely clueless on what that is and how to even read it. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you on the next video. Bye for now.